This is Apollo Control at 154 hours, 15 minutes. We're showing Apollo 10's distance as 163,186 nautical miles. Velocity 5,082 feet per second. We're estimating the change of shift news conference for 10.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Apollo 10, this is Houston. We've completed the state vector and clock delta T uplink. We've also performed the verb 66 for you. Over. Houston, uh, we're uh, in a 20 minute wait period with our uh, C and D jets disabled prior to set number three tenths of degree rollway. Uh, Roger, did you copy? We're through with the computer. We did a verb 66, state vector update, and uh, clock update. Apollo 10, over. Apollo 10, this is Houston, reading you loud and clear, over. Houston, it's Apollo 10, over. How do you read? Apollo 10, Apollo 10, this is Houston, reading you loud and clear, over. Apollo 10, this is Houston, over. Roger, we're not reading you, Bruce. We know you're trying, but we can't make it out. Roger, 10, we'll keep trying. Okay, we're just live clear now. Okay, we're through with the computer. Uh, we gave you a state vector update, a clock update, and we did the verb 66 for you, over. Thank you. And I was just saying, uh, we're in our 20-minute hold period prior to that number three tenths degree rate. It's going to wide dead man. Uh, Roger, we copy. We'll stick with you until you get set up in PTC, and then I guess we'll bid you a good night. Uh, Ten Houston on our displays down here. We show your rates. No allow sufficiently to proceed with setting up the desired roll rate. Over. This is Houston. Uh, if you all want to sign off now, we have nothing further for you. Uh, I guess we'll expect to hear from you in the same way. I guess down voice backup as in the past. Roger. We'll be talking to you. Roger out. Good night. This is Apollo Control. You heard uh, Capcom Bruce McCandless bid the crew good night. At the present time, uh, Apollo 10 is 162,122 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a speed of 5,098 feet per second. Uh, this rest period is scheduled to last for nine hours until about uh, 163 hours ground elapsed time. Uh, during the uh, night, we'll uh, give you periodic status reports on the condition of the spacecraft and uh, the position. And uh, we'll be continuing to monitor systems and uh, also the uh, biomedical information on the crew. At 154 hours, 38 minutes, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control at 155 hours, 24 minutes. Our flight surgeon reports that uh, the crew apparently are still awake. The uh, last time we heard from them was uh, about 50 minutes ago when Capcom Bruce McCandless bid the crew good night. Uh, we have biomedical data on Tom Stafford and Gene Cernan 
Uh, John Young is apparently in the sleep station under the right couch. We don't have biomedical data on him, but the, uh, the information we're getting from uh, telemetry uh, from Stafford and Cernan indicates that uh, they have not gone to sleep at this time. Apollo 10 is now uh, 159,739 nautical miles from Earth. Uh, it's more than 51,000 miles from the moon at this point and traveling at a speed of 5,135 feet per second. At 155 hours, 25 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 156 hours, 22 minutes. Uh, we're continuing to uh, monitor both spacecraft uh, systems and uh, crew biomedical data. The flight surgeon advises us that the uh, crew apparently is still uh, up and about in the spacecraft. Uh, we have biomedical data on two crewmen and uh, indicates that uh, from their heart and respiration rates that uh, they are not sleeping at this time. At uh, the present time, Apollo 10 is 156,787 nautical miles from Earth, and the speed continuing to increase slowly uh, up now to 5,183 feet per second. At 156 hours, 23 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 157 hours, 28 minutes. It appears that the crew is sleeping at this time. The one crewman on whom we have biomedical data, uh, John Young, uh, has been asleep now for about 40 or 45 minutes. Uh, all spacecraft systems continue to look good at this time. Apollo 10 is presently 153,450 nautical miles from Earth and traveling at a speed of 5,238 feet per second. At 157 hours, 29 minutes, this is Mission Control. Uh, this is Apollo Control at 158 hours, 24 minutes. Uh, Apollo 10 now. 150,581 nautical miles from Earth, and the spacecraft velocity 5,287 feet per second. Uh, we have had uh, no conversations with the crew throughout uh, this shift. Uh, after bidding, the, bidding them good night at uh, 154 hours 35 minutes, biomedical data uh, indicated that uh, John Young uh, began to sleep about uh, an hour and a half ago. And it's been relatively quiet here in Mission Control. At uh, 158 hours, 25 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 159 hours, 35 minutes. Uh, at the present time, Apollo 10 is 146,937 nautical miles from Earth and traveling at a speed of 5,353 feet per second. The crew continuing to uh, sleep soundly, at least uh, according to the telemetry data we're getting on one of the crewmen, John Young. Uh, flight surgeon reports his heart rate in the low 50s. And... Uh, he seems to be sleeping soundly. Uh, we bid the crew good night at uh, 154 hours, 35 minutes, which would be just about uh, five hours ago. And it appeared that uh, they began going to sleep uh, about uh, two hours after the rest period began. The spacecraft cabin temperature has been running around 71 degrees most of the evening. 
and the uh, fuel cell performance and all other systems uh, performance has been nominal. The spacecraft weight at the present time is 25,240 pounds. That's about uh, 10,000 pounds or so less than uh, Apollo 10 weighed prior to the trans-Earth injection maneuver. Most of the weight difference there accounted for in the SPS burn that uh, took the spacecraft out of lunar orbit. At 159 hours, 36 minutes, this is mission control. This is Apollo control at 160 hours, 41 minutes. Apollo 10 now, 143,425 nautical miles from Earth, and the velocity up now to 5,419 feet per second. Uh, there's been no change in the uh, status of spacecraft or crew since our last report. The crew continues to sleep. Uh, we don't plan to awaken them. Uh, tomorrow's, rather today's activities, uh, relatively light. And uh, the plan is to let the uh, crew sleep as long as they wish. The uh, spacecraft has been maintaining a very good passive thermal control. Uh, rotating at one revolution, or rather three revolutions per hour, and we've had uh, no thruster firings to correct dispersions in the attitude since uh, establishing the passive thermal control. This is Apollo control at 160 hours, 42 minutes. This is Apollo Control at 161 hours, 44 minutes. Uh, Apollo 10 now, uh, 140,097 nautical miles from Earth. And the spacecraft velocity, 5,484 feet per second. The crew uh, well into their nine hour rest period at this point. Uh, normally, the rest period would end at uh, 163 hours, uh, a little over an hour and 15 minutes from now. Uh, however, because of tomorrow's relatively light uh, schedule as far as the flight plan is concerned, uh, it is planned to let the uh, crew sleep as long as they wish. During the uh, Evening, uh, Flight Dynamics Officer has been working up some preliminary figures for mid-course correction number six, which will probably be the only mid-course required uh, prior to re-entry. Uh, that's scheduled to occur, uh, the mid-course the mid correction, scheduled to occur at 176 hours, 50 minutes, ground elapsed time. And the... Uh, preliminary uh, data for that burn uh, is as follows. It would be a 1.2 foot per second uh, maneuver using two uh, uh, reaction control system jets. The burn duration would be about five seconds and it would uh, put the spacecraft on target for a splash uh, at 164 degrees 41 minutes west uh, longitude and 15 degrees 4 minutes south latitude and the splash time would be very close to the uh, nominal listed in the flight plan at uh, 192 hours uh, 3 or 4 minutes at uh, 161 hours 46 minutes this is mission control This is Apollo Control at 162 hours, 42 minutes. Uh, the Apollo 10 crew now about eight hours into their planned nine hour sleep period. Uh, Apollo 10 at this time is 136,955 nautical miles from Earth and traveling at a speed of 5,547 feet per second. 
Here in Mission Control, uh, we're having our change of shift. Flight Director uh, Pete Frank is uh, relieving Flight Director Milton Windler. Uh, Capcom for this shift is uh, Jack Lausma. Uh, the Apollo 10 crew, uh, according to biomedical uh, telemetry information that we had on John Young, uh, apparently did not get to sleep until about an hour and a half after beginning the sleep period. Because of the light schedule of activities on today's flight plan, uh, a decision has been made to let the crew determine their own wake-up time. We don't plan to put in a call uh, to the crew uh, to wake them up. At 162 hours, 44 minutes, this is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control. Apparently the crew of Apollo 10 is awake. They're now beaming music back down to Earth. Let's uh, listen in. Good morning, this is Tom John O'Dean at KAP-10 uh, broadcasting again from approximately 140,000 miles out of your universe. It's a beautiful day out here and it appears that it might be a beautiful day down in the uh, other country. For those of you who are not uh, yet ready for work or are just uh, getting up, get up lazy boat. It's time, you've got a big day ahead and the uh, thought for today is, remember, National Secretary's week was last month. Uh, good morning, Apollo 10. Uh, you managed to wake everybody up early down here, and uh, thank you for your uh, brief program. And uh, we'll be uh, giving your advice due consideration down here. And uh, we've got a little bit of music for you. Roger, thank you for the applause, and uh, watch out for migratory bird season. That was a couple of seals up here. You might have recognized Deke Slate in the solo on that song we sent up to you, Ken. Yet, and I'm going home. I'll see you guys later. Hey, Joe, we haven't even had a chance to say hello to you. I know that. I hung around to wait, wait till you wake up. It was an exciting night last night. I'm glad we filmed it. We just figured it out. We're, we're rotating three times an hour, and it gives us three days and three nights every hour. Now, how, what day is it? That makes it about the middle of August, I think. Hello, Houston Apollo 10. Morning, Tom. Oh, Roger, is Joe still there? Over. Right, nah, he's still here. Go ahead. Yeah, Joe. Look, uh, how about doing me a favor, will you, old buddy? Over. You name it. Okay. Uh, so we're uh, kind of out of town uh, for church today, and. Uh, the minister there, you know, Reverend Parent wanted to mark, you know, reflections or something that might be appropriate to read in the service since I won't be around there. If you got a pencil, I just had copied down a couple of things that uh, I thought might be appropriate. Over. Roger, go ahead. Uh, Roger, so Psalm 8, Psalm 122, Psalm 148, and Isaiah 2. Four, over. Okay, I read back Psalm 8, 122, 148, and Isaiah 2, 4. All right, I uh, just uh, to tell the 
congregation hello for me, and that uh, I thought that those might be appropriate since he was asking for something, you know, that uh, to go along with the mission over. Roger that, Tom. That's very appropriate. I'll see that uh, the word gets around. Joe knows them all right off the top of his head. I gave up the game a long time ago. We'll have to try it again after we get back. That's a good idea. I'd like to take it up. Hey, Dean, I've got your uh, Astrocast here. We're trying to whip up some news, but I think it'll be a while. Yours is uh, this okay, Monday. Yeah. This Sunday may find you in some quandary over a home condition. There should be some help available. Don't make smart remarks about Marines. Who, who wrote that? Did the great philosopher write that? Uh, the uh, unemployed philosopher, uh, he's got the day off today. And I'm still waiting for that special song. And here's John. Says money has to be spent today on institutions and the use of them for various purposes. Take the time to check everything out before doing anything drastic. Finding the why in a situation may be more important than any other determination. They got me there, all right. <laughs> yeah. And Tom, uh, did your relatives and neighbors expect to see you this Sunday? Do the amenities gracefully. Make the rounds. There are gifts for you here and there. Then seek solitude. Reprimand all those in your command who make smart remarks about Marines. Over. <laughs> oh, tremendous, Jack. That's just tremendous. <laughs> Hey, Jack, don't you call us, we'll call you. Are you just coming on duty or are you leaving? Just coming on. Oh, my golly. Well, I've been out guarding the gate all night, of course. This is Apollo Control. Crew of Apollo 10, apparently at this time, are having breakfast. They were to have slept a little bit longer, although they did wake up about the uh, pre-mission flight plan wake-up time. Here in Mission Control, it had been decided to just let them sleep until they called back here. Their call was in the form of uh, music being piped down from the spacecraft from a small cassette tape recorder. Lunar module pilot Gene Cernan followed up with a disc jockey bit. There was a certain amount of repartee between the ground and the spacecraft communicator here in Mission Control, oncoming Orange Team Capcom Jack Lausma and outgoing Maroon Team Capcom Joe Engel. Spacecraft Commander Tom Stafford suggested uh, several biblical readings for today's services at Seabrook Methodist Church to uh, Capcom Joe Engel, both of whom go to the same church. Since Tom would not be able to attend the uh, services today himself, he suggested readings from Psalms 8, 122, 148, and Isaiah 24. We'll continue to monitor air-ground transmissions as the crew completes breakfast. We get into the crew status report, the flight plan updates, and uh, 
day's activities, which are primarily mid-course navigation using a combination of star and earth horizon, in which the included angle between the near or far earth horizon and the desired navigation star is uh, massaged by the onboard computer to provide position and velocity information. Standing by on live air ground for resumption of communication with Apollo 10. Hello, Houston. It's Charlie Brown. Uh, go ahead, Charlie. You're stupid. Jack, uh, I'd like to hold off on that ECS redundant component check until we get uh, fuel cell number one back on the line, which I assume won't be too long, judging from the temperature. Uh, main reason is uh, I, I just rather do that when I turn on the secondary pump. Okay, Gino, that'll work out good. <laughs> okay, thank you, Jack. This is Apollo Control. Circuit's getting quite noisy as a spacecraft rotates around where the uh, Omni antennas tend to break lock. Present position of Apollo 10, 134,041 nautical miles above Earth, or out from Earth. Velocity steadily increasing now 5,609 feet per second. Here in mission control, the uh, maneuver pad for uh, mid-course correction number six, and uh, state vector updates and all the other information that must be passed up to the crew today are being generated. The crew apparently still in the midst of breakfast. We now uh, rejoin the static from the air ground circuit. This is Apollo Control, still standing by for resumption of communications with Apollo 10. As they settle down for the day's business. We'll continue to monitor the uh, circuit here as uh, hopefully conversation will resume. Here it goes. The uh, orange bugle here when you're ready to listen. Set it up, Jack. Okay, uh, Hilo, Hawaii. Kilauea volcano on the island of Hawaii erupted shortly before dawn Saturday, viewing lava 200 feet into the air. Dr. Howard Powers, scientist in charge of the U.S. Geological Survey's Volcano Ab Observatory, said it was the 14th eruption in Kilauea since 1960. The last one occurred February 22 and it lasted for 55 hours. Aboard the yacht Duchess, the first men scheduled to land on the moon practice earth splashdown procedures in the Gulf of Mexico Saturday and sprayed each other with disinfectants that will be used to guard against any unexpected moon bug contamination. Apollo 11 astronaut Neil Armstrong, Mike Collins, and uh, Buzz Aldrin wore olive drab, plastic-coated biological isolation garments designed to keep any hostile organisms they might bring back from getting loose in the Earth's environment. The exercise began when a dummy moonship with a pilot aboard was dumped into the calm gulf three miles south of Galveston, Texas from the space agency vessel Retriever. The command module was turned upside down and it then flipped over using its own writing system. Four swimmers attached a yellow flotation collar to the capsule and then one of them donned an isolation garment while the other swimmers moved away on the raft. Miami Beach, blonde, hazel-eyed, Miss Virginia. 19-year-old Wendy Deskin, Saturday night, was selected. 1969 Miss USA over four other finalists in the annual pageant. Daughter of a Danville, West Virginia, correct, Danville, Virginia physician, Miss Dascom is a former cheerleader who is now attending Stratford College. 
She said she entered the contest because her schoolmates said I might have a good possibility of winning. Pago Pago, American Samoa. The governor of this South Pacific American territory Saturday promised a Polynesian welcome of singing and dancing for the Apollo 10 astronauts. But nothing risque. The celebration on Monday limited to 10 minutes will include a typical Samoan dance by several of our beautiful girls, said Governor Owen S. Aspinall. The dancers will wear the Samoan full passing costume, a colorful two-piece outfit consisting of a wraparound skirt and blouse. There will be nothing risque, of course, said the governor. The dancers are well within the proprieties of Samoan custom. So while they're dancing, you can stand there itching. Moscow. A Soviet scientist said Saturday that Russia will depend on machines instead of man to explore the gloomiest corners of the solar system. He indicated the Soviets plan a spectacular series of unmanned space shots within the next decade, culminating in 1977 with a nine-year instrument odyssey to four distant planets. Such a trip, he said, could not be repeated in this century. Hagerstown, Maryland. Even in these days of affluence in society, it may sound a bit hedonistic to own your own railroad car. But Reuben Darby has made a business of converting old railroad cars into private palace cars. Price is $50,000 and up. Wonder what they do with old command monuments. London. The achievement of Apollo 10 is a superb combination of human courage and technical skills. Sir Bernard Lovell, director of Britain's General Bank Observatory and a leading space expert said today in an article for the Times. Kathmandu, Nepal. A five-member Swiss mountaineering group has conquered 22,686-foot Mount Suki in western Nepal. The leader of the expedition said today, and George Hartman, said his team scaled the mountain twice in one day. In the National League, Chicago 7, San Diego 5. Houston over the Mets, 5 to 1. And the Phillies beat the Braves, 8 to 3. Got the rest of the scores here if you want them. Oklahoma still doesn't have a baseball team. Hello, Houston, this is Ted. Go ahead. Jack, I don't know whether we lost you or not, but the last we heard was the mountain climb. Okay, you lost me. Let's, uh... Let's just pick up the uh, baseball scores. That's all I had left. Chicago 7, San Diego 5. Houston 5, Mets 1. Phillies 8, Braves 3. And uh, still no baseball team in Oklahoma. Roger. Looks like the Cubs and the, and the Astros are the two hottest ball clubs in the league this, uh, this week. Yeah, the uh, Cubs are qu quite a ways out in front, and uh, Houston really needs it. Yeah, I got two loyalties there, and uh, so I'm, I'm for both. But hey, listen, uh, our heartiest and sincere personal congratulations to Miss Virginia. Roger, we copy. Uh, sincere congratulations to 19-year-old Miss Virginia. Thank you for the news, Jack. How's the weather back there these days? Well, the weather around Houston has uh, been real nice. It's uh, getting rather warm uh, up to about 90 each day, and, uh, and then old humidity is starting to climb, too. in the recovery area. Oh, I have a uh, request in for weather and we'll get that to you pretty soon. Okay. Uh, 
and uh, Jack, you might um, pass on to the governor down there in Samoa that we're certainly looking forward to the reception and seeing his beautiful island over. Roger, Tom. We'll pass that on. Okay, Dan uh, Houston, here's the uh, weather forecast for the landing area. Essentially no change from the weather I gave you yesterday. 1,800 scattered, 10,000 broken, high broken, 10 miles. Wind uh, 120 at 15 knots. Wave height is 5 feet, 81 degrees. Widely scattered showers. Over. Okay, the uh, weather conditions are uh, no different than forecast yesterday. 1,800 scattered, 10,000 broken, high broken, and 10. Winds 120 at 15, wave height 5 feet, 81 degrees. Widely scattered showers, over. Roger, 10. Uh, we can see you're really determined to get here. Uh, matter of fact, uh, if you want, we probably could arrange it so that you didn't have to stop at Samoa on the way over. Uh, Jack, uh, after careful consideration here, uh, we voted that you should go back and guard the gate. This is Apollo Control. A little more disc jockey type uh, music out of the spacecraft. Dean Martin's going back to Houston. Continuing to monitor air ground here for resumption of the day's activities. Here we go. Uh, we'd kind of like to uh, go to high gain antenna. And uh, during PTC mode, if you would uh, go to REACT, and narrow beam, your settings are uh, pitch plus 30 and yaw 270. Over. Okay, uh, how soon do you expect us to pick that up, Jack? I I'm in narrow and react right now. And I'll go to high gain on my uh, switch in here. And uh, you can switch us whenever uh, you think we'll get that. Uh, Roger, and uh, during the times that you're not in PTC uh, today, you can go high gain, high gain to manual and uh, select Omni B, over. Omni B, Roger. This is Apollo Control. Circuit noise building up as the spacecraft rotates around toward breaking lock with the Omni antenna. We'll continue to uh, monitor for resumption of conversation. Hello, Houston, this is 10. Uh, howdy, 10, reading you loud and clear now. Yeah, that, uh, let me get that that antenna set up for you, and then I'll put it in REACT, because it doesn't want to pick it up and uh, lock on you and REACT. Uh, let 
Let me know when you want to want to make that switch over to high gain, and I'll set it up for you, and then put it in react, and uh, then we'll let it run. Otherwise, I don't think it's going to lock on for us. And I've got some uh, rad readings for you if you'd like them. Okay, let's go with the rad readings. Okay, two six zero four six zero five zero four six and one five zero four seven. Proper report uh, from yesterday is proper report from yesterday. Uh, the uh, commander and the uh, CMP both in one moment. Roger, we copy. And uh, attend Houston, uh, you can select high gain now. Okay, thank you. Apollo 10, Houston, how do you read now? Okay, Jack, uh, I'll give it to you now. It's in uh, REAC at uh, plus 30 and 270. Okay, good. Okay, 10, uh, the high gain antenna then, uh, you can uh, leave her hands off and uh, we'll take her from here. Over. It's all yours. I didn't mean to hit command reset, but uh, I thought since there's nothing critical, I'd play with it for a while and get it set up. Because the first time around, it didn't want to uh, acquire. It was banging all over the place uh, uh, when we were trying to come back around, so I thought I'd get you a good lock on. So we're at React Narrow. Okay, you know, uh, we weren't quite in the high gain in uh, attitude there, and uh, we weren't able to get our uh, command in. Okay, dog. Uh, Jack, uh, uh, what do you think about putting fuel cell one on, and I'll uh, get on with that uh, redundant component check and start the battery charge and what have you? Okay, Gene, uh, let's uh, crank up fuel cell one, put it on both buses, and uh, give it a chance to warm up, and uh, in about one hour we'll go with the uh, redundant component check over. Okay, uh, is it okay then to go ahead and put uh, start charging uh, battery B at this time after I get it on? Uh, affirmative, uh, Gino, uh, you can start your battery recharge. And uh, when you're ready to copy, I've got uh, consumables and the uh, flight plan on. Okay, Jack, uh, go ahead on the consumables, over. Okay, on the consumables, Tom, uh, at 162 hours, we had uh, total RCS 55%, A44605678. H2 and O2 is 24.7 and 315. Your RCS is 18% above the flight plan. Okay, I've got all those. Thank you. And uh, Apollo 10, uh, we've got you out there about 130,000 miles at about uh, 5,700 feet per second. And... Uh, We've got a nominal entry angle of uh, minus 6.52. Roger, you mean that last uh, maneuver we made with, uh, with using the GNN in the water put us in the corner there, over? Uh, Roger. Fantastic. Uh, Roger, uh, we're... Uh, from that, I take it that uh, we don't... Uh, pardon me, but what I take from that is we don't make any more mid-courses, over? Okay, 10, uh, the numbers that I gave you were uh, with a mid-course would be a minus 6.52, so we're going to do mid-course 6. Over. All right, you understand, mid-course 6, thank you.
And uh, in our present status, uh, without them in course, we'd be up around 6.95. So uh, we're right in there anyway, pretty close. But uh, we ought to sweeten it up a little. Oh, that's your rear grill. And Apollo 10 Houston, uh, we have a state vector for you when we can get your computer and uh, also have a uh, minor flight plan update or. Roger, computer is unaccepted this time and go ahead. Roger, uh, flight plan update. Uh, here's a note first. The uh, P 23s uh, scheduled for today are designed to determine the minimum sun angle. However, you may have a little more, a little difficulty with one or more of these sets due to the sun angle. However, uh, the attempts should be made anyway on schedule. At uh, 168 hours, consideration is being given to an S-band reflectivity test, and the test procedures are on test procedures are on page 3-19A of the flight plan. Okay, Apollo 10, Apollo 10, Houston. Understand we didn't key, so I'll repeat. Roger, we're trying to find. Uh, how much did you copy, Tom? Nothing. Okay, uh, the site wasn't no, we keying. we didn't copy at all. Roger, the site wasn't keying, and uh, they're keying for us now. So the uh, P-23s that are scheduled for today are designed to determine the minimum sun angle. You may have a little difficulty with one or more of these sets because of the sun angle. However, the attempt should be made anyway on schedule. At 168 hours, we're giving consideration to making an S-band reflectivity test. And these test procedures are on page 3-19A of the flight plan but we'll come through with more word on this later. At uh, 17030, delete the ECS redundant component check. This uh, check is duplicated uh, in about an hour anyway, so we'll delete that 100 at 170 hours. Over. Roger, we have ECS redundant component check uh, deleted. Houston, uh, with that state vector you just gave us, would it be okay to run through uh, P-37 to see what that mid course is going to be? Just to see what this thing thinks it's going to be? Stand by one, John. Okay, Apollo 10, Houston, uh, uplink complete. You can go to uh, block, and uh, we'd like to see you do some P-37s, and uh, the... Uh, Time you can use is at 176.50, and uh, we'd like to follow you through on it. Over. Apollo 10, Houston, you copy. Roger, uh, we're going to run through P-37 right now. Are you guys copying all this? Okay, uh, Jack. That's affirmative, John. We've got. It. Uh, time transfer, 14 hours, 58 minutes, and 44.78 seconds. All right, do we see it? Wow. You said that. Go ahead. Jack, can you give me a recommended uh, exposure setting to uh, use the... Uh, Interior 16 millimeter film uh, outside at distant Earth, please. Stand by one. Just want to check it against my stop meter in here. Roger. Do you have just two passes? That's great. 
Uh, Apollo 10 Houston, uh, we noticed you got uh, Delta V, uh, or correction, uh, inertial velocity 36314. We had different by one foot per second, and uh, you got uh, minus 6.5, we got minus 6.52, or. Well, I, I don't know why you guys sent me the data. I would argue over two hundredths of a degree anyway. Nobody knows it that well. All yeah, right, we were uh, just trying to tell you how well off you are. Roger. Never doubt. What'd you guys get for Delta V? Well, uh, we're looking at 1.2 on uh, Delta V. Outstanding. Apollo Control. Spacecraft now 129,835 nautical miles from Earth, traveling at a velocity of 5,701 foot per second. We'll be passing up to the crew the uh, maneuver pad, all the numbers needed for preparing to do the mid-course correction burn number six, which uh, will be in the neighborhood of 1.2 feet per second. Also, the entry pad, which uh, will have uh, all of the numbers needed for the ranging and spacecraft steering during entry, as well as times of entry events, such as uh, drogue chute deploy, main parachute deploy, splice down, and so on. These numbers will be refined after mid-course number six, and additional tracking is acquired and processed here on Earth. We'll continue to stand by on live air to ground as the conversation continues with Apollo 10. Uh, Apollo 10 Houston, uh, we have some dope on the exposure setting for you. Turns out the whole uh, film, of course, has to be processed the same way. So if you're going to uh, use the whole magazine for exterior shots, that is the whole magazine, your exposure setting should be F11 at 1 250th. If you want to use part of the film for, part of the magazine for interior shots, then do your exterior shots at F22 and 1 500th. Over. Jack, I missed part of that. I understand exterior shots with the 60 millimeter, in, 16 millimeter interior is uh, F22 at uh, a 500, that, that's all I heard. Houston, this 10. Okay, 10, how do you read me now, over? Okay, why don't you repeat that for me, Jack, would you? Okay, uh, since the uh, whole film has got to be processed uh, in uh, one batch, uh, if you want to use the whole magazine for exterior shots, your setting should be F11 at 1 250th. But if you want to use part of the magazine interior, then do the exteriors at uh, F22 and 1 500th so that all the pictures will come out all right when they're processed, over. Okay, I got that. Thank you very much, Jack. Uh, Apollo 10 Houston, uh, it turns out that it's uh, quite important that we uh, do this P-23 mid-course uh, navigation drill uh, pretty much on time to uh, get uh, appropriate data and solutions. And uh, so we'd like to recommend that uh, we get on with it pretty soon, over. Roger, we're going on with it right now.
This is Apollo Control. We've had no recent communications with the spacecraft, and uh, while the entry and mid-course correction number six information is being compiled to pass up to the crew, we'll uh, take this circuit down for the time being and bring it back up uh, when conversation does resume. And at 165 hours, 29 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control.